Okay, so we glad to have this session today, and uh, we want to uh, really acknowledge the effort that we have all put to us this. Uh, I know the shift from physical to online was still a challenge, but somehow we managed to circumvent that. And that's why we were able to push on uh, with the lessons. So we, we, we just want to appreciate uh, that we are almost getting to the tail end. Today we are focusing on lesson 15. That means we'll only remain with one lesson to conclude. Uh, so I, I think because some members have not yet joined, uh, I'll just get to the lesson straight away. And then uh, after that, in between, we'll be able to have uh, some discussion on the project proposal. So let's just uh, move on with the lesson and then we'll engage as we continue. So if you're able to reach out to your colleagues in terms of the ones that you're working together, uh, the project, I think it will be good just to check on them. Those who have not joined, maybe you can just text them to, come to know if they are joining. And then after this lesson, we'll have a discussion around that as we, as we proceed. So today we are focusing on lesson 15, which is a very, very important uh, lesson uh, because this is what will help us to maintain the momentum that we have been able to build this far. Within the last uh, about 11, 10 weeks, we have been on this uh, platform, and this has been part of the personal growth and development uh, period. And uh, I think we just want to discuss or have a conversation on, in terms of how do we maintain this momentum. So basically, that's the key uh, objective of this uh, lesson. So I think as we go through the lesson, we can be thinking about uh, what's my way forward? Uh, how do I maintain this momentum? Uh, there are some habits we have cultivated. How do we uh, continue enhancing those habits, uh, the positive habits, some of the exercises that we've been having on a book challenge or the book summary. Maybe you used to do it previously or you just started with this program. So how do we move on with that? Uh, that will be the, the inner conversation that I will challenge all of us to just uh, engage in uh, so that whatever we share here, you can be able to personalize it and see how, uh, how do you craft a way forward and how do you probably develop your own uh, personal growth and development uh, plan just to make sure that we are moving on. Uh, with this investment. So as, as we discuss this, I will first maybe just want us to reflect on some of the challenges that we face as leaders. I know all of us as leaders, there are some of the challenges we have encountered and we still continue to encounter in our leadership journey. And I think uh, it's good to think about what are some of the challenges that we have encountered and how do we deal with them? We may not be able to discuss how to deal with them, but we can just highlight uh, what are some of the challenges that we have encountered in our leadership journey. Uh, uh, just to have a, just two, two, two minutes or so to discuss around that. I'll also share some of the challenges from the experience and also from research that have been able to be highlighted by other leaders. And we see if we concur with those leaders in terms of what they have highlighted as some of the key challenges that leaders are experiencing. So maybe let me just open uh, for about two minutes from your leadership journey. What are some of the challenges you have encountered? And if you're able to share how you overcame the challenge, well and good, but if you can just mention, uh, that, will still be, that will still be okay. So, and then I'll do a summary of some of the 10 challenges most often uh, faced by leaders. And then I'll share a link on how you can uh, 
read more in terms of how did those leaders deal with those challenges. So let me open it up. Uh, maybe Ada Nelson, you can go first, and then I will just uh, listen into Mr. Giviomi, and then Job, or any other order that uh, you feel you can be able to come in. Good. So let's discuss. Hey, uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, yes, Nelson, please proceed. Yes, Kiari. So, so some of the challenges are, uh, uh, can, I can say, and no, you might go to some places that you really don't have the, or you're not well equipped in that uh, specific area because you led in other forums, you're required to be a leader in that particular forum. Mm -hmm. So that knowledge gap might be a bit of a stumbling block until now you go and find your way you, or you learn as you move. Mm -hmm. uh, so knowledge gap is uh, one of the challenges that leaders face because they're expected to think on the go. They don't have time to uh, go and prepare to be a leader you're just a leader and you were put in that position so things should uh, move as per uh, expected so knowledge gap is one of them and i think nelson i like that because uh, what you've mentioned that you've been a leader in one uh, maybe in a particular environment so the expectation is that you can yes. still be able to lead in another environment. Is that, did I get you clear? Yes, 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 very true, very true. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think, I, I appreciate that, I appreciate that. Uh, I think personally I've been in that. Uh, it was a time when I was doing my studies outside the country. So I was elected to be the president of my college and i realized the mix there was very different these are people from different countries uh people from different religions uh people with different backgrounds so uh the leadership styles that i was applying here in kenya uh was challenged because if i'm leading my fellow workmates or uh, people from the church, it's very easy to understand each other. Our background are almost common. Our cultures are not so much uh, disjointed. And our thinking style is also a bit, uh, it's a bit, we are not that far apart. But I realized there, people are from very different backgrounds. You, 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 you mention a word, but you need to explain in details because uh, that word might mean something else. Uh, to someone from another background. So I, I, I appreciate that, Nelson. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mr. Gidiomi. Uh, Mr. Gidiomi. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, um, I did mind as a leader, be instant change uh, it happens i think that that that's a challenge and i think we learned uh, the last lesson we learned about the babu uh, brought out that, that very clearly the example or rather the, the the what i have encountered previously is that i joined a group uh, that is called lnet ethical leadership network that was that were, is promoting ethics practices, whether you are in a managerial position, whichever, you know, a small business is a, running a saloon or you are running a bank, you know, all that. And uh, uh, okay, what came out is that because you are telling people about working ethically, uh, it's like some which country. Are, you coming from? Do you think we can change what we have been doing? And more so for ethics, because it's like we are telling people if they have been uh, getting some money, I unethically, you know, maybe right now stop it. 
and you know somebody who has defined success in his life is the accumulation of money then you are trying to bring in somebody to show him that you can you live a better and more peaceful life if you are ethical then you really need to to to, to think i personally i felt i need to work on that being persistent why and also on the other side you have a you have a majority of people who think the state change so you you are caught in between uh with that kind of a mindset so you really need to be very very persistent uh for you to to to, to live enough or to keep on uh creating this and showing the benefits of uh ethical living because it is not something that you sell one day and you see the dust more more so for a society that has enjoyed uh you know that kind of a lifestyle or where the society has different successes money and now you are telling them no greed was not the way of life that you to 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 acquire wealth mm. thank you yeah very true yeah and i think the the culture the culture uh, especially on different environments so we lead in different cultures you lead people with different mindsets so and every time you you, you get in such kind of a setup then uh, and uh, we look at that because one of the major challenge that uh, we are facing is in terms of uh, the mindset transformation uh, and as Nelson said also in terms of the knowledge gap uh, among other challenges that leaders are facing. So let me just highlight some of the few challenges. Uh, one, we are talking about dealing with the change, especially like we saw during this period of COVID, a lot of shifts. So how do we deal with change as leaders? That's a challenge. Uh, sometimes we can talk about difficult people. Uh, it happens, but difficult people might also mean that there might be more definition in, into, into that. Uh, dealing with the pressure, uh, letting someone go, especially if there is a shift, uh, there is a transition, uh, maybe from one place to another, or any other kind of uh, shift, and you have to say goodbye. I know we have had leaders who have mentored other leaders, and at some point they have to move on, uh, maybe to another level of leadership delivering bad news, staying motivated. How do we stay motivated as leaders? This is a big challenge. There is an assumption leaders are always doing well. So uh, sometimes it's hard to get someone who will uh, give you a shoulder uh, because people are coming for your shoulder, but they're not coming to offer their own shoulder. You as a leader, the assumption is that you are doing well. And I think this is why such kind of forums are very important where we can just come and uh, just pour, pour our hearts and be able to listen to each other. Culture issues, I think we have mentioned this, uh, attracting respect, maintaining focus. Maintaining focus is really key. Uh, how do we ensure that we maintain focus despite the, the dynamic changes that we are experiencing? Yeah, so communicating challenges or communication challenges, how do we handle failure as leaders? And then the other challenge is on growth and development because uh, our entry is always, I can say always full. So how do we take uh, and allocate time for our own growth despite the time that we allocate for actual uh, leadership? So, uh, and there is probability of at times even uh, uh, forgetting to uh, take care of the inner person in terms of growth because the demands are so much uh, on us. So uh, that's why it's critical that uh, in such kind of an environment, we're able now to say, now let's block this one and a half hours just for uh, personal growth and development. And Simon, Sam, Simon Sinek, Sinek said, customers will never love a company until the employees love it fast. And uh, we can take this also to what the other dimension we have been talking about. Unless we grow, unless we are able to move uh, and uh, 
narrow the knowledge gap in terms of leadership, then it will be very hard to be able to help others to be able to embark on the same on the same journey. So I'll share this link just to be able to look at how do you deal with some of these challenges among us, the others that you have been able to share. So uh, personal growth and development is very, very critical. It's one of the distinction, distinction uh, success factor uh, in life. Anybody who has been able to break through uh, in different uh, success domains will always connect that with a very, very planned and executed uh, personal growth development. And uh, Robin Sharma, the author of The Leader Who Had No Title or The Leader Without a Title, talks about uh, how to triple your income. And he says the safest way to triple your success is to double your investment in personal development. Yeah, and also in, even in terms of bettering your own leadership uh, capacity. I think the how to triple, how to enhance that uh, is linked to uh, one of the success factor, which is personal development and growth. And it is intentional as we look at it. Uh, what we see out there when we see a successful leader is just the tip of the iceberg. But if you get to the bottom, if you get to the core part of the, the iceberg, you will be able to realize one of the critical uh, element is a, a planned personal growth and development uh, strategy, among other, other qualities, as you can see on the screen there, there are issues of sacrifice, display, there are issues of managing failure, uh, hard work, uh, dedication, and also good habits that are able to help that tip appear uh, how it appears. So some of the others and some of the, mind, the, the, the thoughts around this subject uh, that I just want to highlight, one of them is from James Allen. This is the author of uh, As a Man Thinketh. And he says, people are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. And I think it's one thing to talk about where I want to be, or to talk about the subject of success, or to talk about becoming better, and it's another thing to be able to embark on the journey and the process of really getting into the nitty gritty of becoming uh, or uh, working towards that picture. And I think this is what some James Allen is talking about, that that how people are anxious to improve their circumstances or even to become better, but that willingness to be able to uh, really work on themselves becomes the challenge. You can remember the picture that I showed you, I think last week or the other week of this speaker who asked uh, a question to the audience. And the first question was, who wants change? And everybody was like, yes, we all want change. And the second question was, who uh, wants to change? And uh, the hands were lowered. And then the last question was, who can drive change? Who wants to drive change? and the, the speaker was left alone. This is what we are talking about here, that commitment to be able to embark on the journey. And it's the same thing when it comes to personal growth and development. So learn to work hard or harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work harder on your job, you can make a living, but if you work hard on yourself, you will make a fortune. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was one of the uh, speakers and other. Uh, in, on areas of marketing. And his challenge here was just not forgetting to work on myself. As much as I work on the external environment, uh, maybe on my job, on my uh, career, on many other aspects, but uh, there is also that part of me that is very important, uh, that really brings out the strength that I possess. Uh, because at some point in life, uh, I think we'll work for the joy of working, not for the joy of the reward. We'll work for the joy of being relevant and for the joy of uh, making a contribution. I think money at some point in life may not really be a factor, but the factor will be what value am I bringing into my, the, 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 
my environment and am I productive? Uh, how do I maintain myself in terms of productivity? How do I maintain my, 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 my strength? How do I keep my mind active? I think those, those will be questions later on in life uh, and those will be part of the drive. Uh, I watched this speaker, Jim Ron, when he was giving his last speech, he was about, I think, uh, either 70 to 80 years old. And he was very energetic. He was very passionate. But the question I asked myself is that this speaker may not be speaking this way at this age, uh, probably for uh, the purpose of making money. That was who he was. And therefore, even at that late age, he was sick. Uh, he had to be, held, to be helped to get on the stage. Uh, but when he got to the stage, he spoke so powerfully. And uh, that was the last speech that he gave. And it was a challenge to me. I started asking myself, at the age of 80, surely what will I be doing? And how do I align myself now so that I will be able to uh, build that and uh, maintain that momentum. So at that age, there are things that drive us. And I think the, the earlier we are able to align ourselves, uh, the better we are able to walk through that journey and also experience the fulfillment. Lastly is the law of intentionality uh, by John Maxwell. Growth does not just happen, as we all know. We have to be intentional about it. And the sooner we make the transition to becoming intentional about our growth, the better it is because growth compounds and accelerates as we remain intentional about it. The, the message there is intentionality. Uh, we need to be intentional in this. And uh, we are saying this is a very important part of our, uh, our leadership. And therefore it has, it cannot be left to circumstance. It has to be planned and it has to be executed uh, in a judicial manner. Uh, meaning that we really have to be strict on it and we have to maintain it uh, throughout the period. So if there's, there's no stretching, there's no growth and progress, and uh, we must be able to uh, stretch as we have done in these 11 weeks to be able to move on. So uh, growth requires to be very pro proactive and also a proactive culture. And the proactive here basically means I have to uh, plan ahead and then embark on the journey. So, and the plan will always get us started, but now what keeps us and the consistency is what makes the difference and the discipline that uh, we walk through in the process of our growth. So uh, just to reinforce this as I get to uh, more details on the subject, just want to highlight some of these the thoughts of these other leaders also. And the one, some of them, we have looked at them. If you're growing, we are always going to be outside our comfort zone. That's true. And uh, strive not to be a success, but rather to be of value. And value is linked to personal growth. Uh, I saw, even in my own journey, uh, the more value I add to myself, the more value I'm able to add to uh, other people. And also, other factors also able to improve. Uh, by adding value to ourselves. So we can't become what we need to be by remaining what we are. That's Oprah Winfrey. There's only one growth strategy. And as, as I've mentioned, is to be intentional, uh, to plan it out, uh, act on it, be ready to stretch, and also maintain consistency. I think that's a very simplified, uh, a very simplified uh, growth strategy uh, that we can all probably think around. And I think the subject, today's subject will just revolve around this, uh, being intentional, uh, being proactive in our planning, and also uh, making sure that we act or execute the strategy, and being comfortable in stretching out, and consistency as well as resilience. And my favorite quote there is that uh, growth is our profit. Uh, growth is our profit. Basically, we mean uh, that what we say is manifested in our growth. So if I plan to be different next year, then what will really make that difference is not what I say, but it's what I'll be doing in terms of becoming that person I desire to be. 
Okay, so uh, finally, uh, finally, as you can see there, we are saying we grow towards opportunity uh, by preparing for opportunities. So let's move on to just a little bit of what we started by saying that if the arts is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, uh, but wisdom brings success. Basically, someone who invests in personal growth, you will realize even with little effort, or you will be able to live with much, much less effort uh, or less, less struggle because you are leading from a point of knowledge, as uh, Nelson has pointed out, the knowledge gap, uh, you've broadened your knowledge, your understanding, and therefore even decision-making is more enhanced. Uh, there are options, there's, there's wisdom. Uh, so there's much eff less effort and more impact and more uh, and more results uh, in terms of our leadership. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, this is what he said, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I would spend first four hours sharpening the arts. Sometimes we spend so much time in leading and we, we, we also maybe uh, neg neglect a, a bit in terms of our growth. And I think the more we invest on the growth, uh, the more we'll be able to also become better uh, in our leadership. Uh, so we need to keep on sharpening ourselves. And I'm sure this will, we, this will reflect uh, in our leadership. I've listened and been in so many forums and sometimes you just listen to the discussions and uh, you realize you have already had such kind of similar scenarios, either in, from experience or even from research. And you are able to easily offer options uh, because you have enriched yourself in a way. So if the only way or one of the ways to sharpen ourselves, uh, it's through this practice of personal growth and development. What is personal growth and development in a very simplified way? We are saying personal growth and development uh, is a continuous lifelong process of discovering, developing, improving our skills, our abilities, and knowledge or potential or strength to ensure maximum effectiveness, efficiency, and growth and productivity, you can add their productivity. So some of the key uh, points to note there, it's lifelong. And uh, Michael Angela at the age of 89 was saying, I'm still growing, I'm still growing, I'm still becoming better. Uh, so a lifelong process of uh, personal discovery, development, uh, so that you're able to improve skills or abilities and knowledge or tap into the potential and the, the objective here is to be able to maximize uh, these qualities uh, to become more effective, more productive, more efficient, and also to ensure that there is growth. So the, grow, the goal is to improve performance, optimize potential, as well as other resources. And uh, this, is the, this is more of like the process. We start from discovery, and if you can recall, level one, this is what we are looking at, uh, self-discovery. When we are looking at SWOT analysis, when we are looking at personality colors, when you look at the gaps, when you're looking at the, the leadership gap and some of the gaps that we're able to identify in ourselves, it was more of a discovery journey. And then from this discovery journey, we're able to highlight, if you can recall, even on the six eyes, we had a scale of rating ourselves in terms of where do we feel we are strong and where do we feel we are, uh, maybe we require to improve. That was a journey of self-discovery. Uh, and from this, we're able to, again, now focus on development uh, by, by working on those areas that we feel we need to improve. And then there is the mastery, you're able to master yourself, you're able to master your uh, your, your leadership styles, uh, and uh, then we transition to actualization. Actualization, basically, we are saying you here you are at the peak. You are performing. You are doing well. You are you, are, you have mastered your craft. You have mastered yourself, uh, and you know your weakness. You know your strength, and probably you have uh, maximized or tapped into your strength, and therefore you are able to flow. 
uh, you're flowing and uh, you, are, you are in sync with yourself. So the segments that we focus on on personal growth and development, one is skill enhancement, uh, where we develop uh, personal skills, personal abilities, and personal competencies. And then there's mentorship, mental conditioning, uh, the willpower. Uh, we are talking about strengthening our minds in terms of probably having a positive outlook. Uh, we are working also in terms of resilience. Uh, how do we maintain in terms of uh, uh, resilience? Uh, so this is an inner or, or a mindset uh, aspect uh, in terms of uh, personal development. And then the other segment is habit creation. Uh, habit creation, as I have said, that growth is our profit. It predicts the same way our habits predict, predicts our future, predicts where we'll be. So as much as we might plan, I think what really makes the difference uh, is the those habits that we're able to uh, plug in and uh, be consistent. So development of behaviors and thoughts that are aligned to uh, to, to to our planned our planned future. So these are the segments that uh, when you are planning your personal growth and development, uh, you take you need to take care of these areas. Uh, the skill enhancement. What are some of the skills? And uh, remember again the iceberg model where we were able to classify this. Uh, the skills will form the twenty percent. And skills, we can also add the knowledge and the experience. So we'll, that will form 10 to 20%. Uh, mental conditioning and habit creation will form about 80 to 90%. Because these are the drivers. And this is what will distinguish us at the end of the, the journey. So there are five areas for personal growth and development. Uh, relationship. Relationship with uh, their spiritual angle on that. Uh, that talks about my relationship with God, uh, my relationship with myself, uh, relationship with probably the spouse or partner or family, friends, dating, or uh, basically that is one of the assets that we have. Uh, relationship is one of the assets that we have. So from ourselves, from the spiritual perspective, and from the people that we feel, uh, we need to add value to them, and also we need to tap uh, from them. And then there is the other area is uh, health and wellness. And uh, we, here we are focusing on mental health, uh, emotional health, uh, as well as the physical, uh, the physical health. So those are the uh, areas also to plan for. And then there is your the career. Here basically you're talking about profession. And then there is the finance and uh, recreation, which focuses on uh, other parts of ourselves that makes us also enjoy the full the, the, the whole person in terms of the hobbies, uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of also having fun along this journey of personal growth and development. So those are some of the areas that we can focus on. And there is a model uh, which I feel is good. Uh, this is an online from an online source, uh, mindelevator.com. So the shared personal growth model. Uh, and basically, there are those particular uh, uh, five components of this model. And the first part of personal growth and development in terms of planning, we start from the belief. And belief here, you will address the issues of the mindset, identity, and motivation. It's like you look at your, you as a person, uh, are there, what are some of the improvements you need to work on in terms of mindset? in terms of identity and in terms of motivation. So the belief, because this, this, is, this is what informs or forms uh, a leader. And a leader will always lead uh, based on the belief he has on he, towards himself and towards the role and towards the people. And then once you pick out these ones out, you're able to move on to the plan. And the plan here, we are talking about goal setting. Uh, we are talking about uh, strategy. Uh, we are talking about maybe looking at the organization uh, in terms of what really needs to uh, to be to be factored in in the growth uh, master plan, and then the action. Now, from the plan, you take an action. Uh, we are looking at execution. We are looking at what habits uh, do we need to build, and uh, what productivity level 
do we expect to attain? And then we move on to results. Where we look at the outcome, plan about the outcome, plan about the reward, and also the feedback system. And then review. Uh, this will focus on evaluation, uh, assessment, and also maybe redesigning the strategies. So this is more of a very simplified uh, uh, personal growth model. And uh, I'll give an example, one of the examples that uh, was attached to this model, or is attached to this model. For example, the belief, some of the questions or some of the areas we can address. Uh, one, we're talking about, I believe that reading is useful and I can expand my knowledge. So that's a belief uh, in the plan. Uh, I value reading as an important way of learning. So those are just two examples, you can add more. When it comes to plan, I set goal to finish reading a book every week, or I make plans to read every night before bed for 30 minutes. So you can see it's really practical. Uh, then action, I place books and my uh, Kindle reader uh, next to my bed. I start developing the habit of reading before bed. And then results, I read every night consecutively for seven days. Uh, I finished one book after I, a week. And then for the review, I track my reading habits every night with a habit tracking up. Uh, I evaluate my learning curve, redesign new strategies and set new goals for myself. So this can help us. If we choose to adopt this model, then we can uh, work around this uh, so that you will address, uh, when it comes to belief, you I, I identify uh, some of the issues you need to capture there, then in the plan, in the action, results, and review. So it's a very simplified, but it can also be a very, very effective model uh, that we can choose to adopt in planning our personal growth and development. So uh, from the definition, uh, we can look at personal development, some of the, uh, the goals that might be included in our planning. Uh, one, we are talking about defining and planning, uh, having a personal development uh, plans or a plan. Then we are talking about the goal is also to improve our self-awareness, uh, improve the knowledge about ourselves, uh, improve skills and personality, building or renewing identity or self-esteem. There are also issues of uh, tapping into the strength that we possess, and talents, improving career. So these are also other goals. And then our identifying or improving potential. Uh, there's, in terms of prof professional uh, growth, you're looking at employability or human capital, then enhancing lifestyle uh, or quality of life. I think that's also a very important uh, goal in personal growth and development, uh, improving health, uh, wealth or social status or value, and also improving social relations or emotional intelligence. And then finally, spiritual identity development and recognition. So these are some of the goals that uh, we, we factor in. And uh, they are aligned from even the other areas that are focused on. If you look at the areas of personal growth and development that I've mentioned, uh, so this, these are some of the goals we can pick to be able to hook into, into those areas, or also they can enhance on the model that we have uh, discussed about. So, so uh, basically the planning process, the planning process, uh, we, which is almost a re-echo of what we are discussing from the beginning, so the planning process of personal growth, we are looking at self-analysis. So you see from the very beginning, uh, it's all about uh, self-analysis. I think we are focused so much on understanding ourselves uh, because leadership is all about that. Uh, knowing myself and also being able to tap into what I have for the benefit of others. So that's where this journey always starts. Then personal reflection, then the honest appraisal of one's strength and weakness, and that is what we focused on, on uh, SWOT analysis. So personal analysis, uh, the weakness, strength, uh, look at 
um, probably the journey you have walked through, connect the, do the dots behind, uh, look at the experience uh, and be able to evaluate critically what you are able to, uh, what you possess and how to bring it out uh, and how to use that in terms of our leadership. Then setting goal, clearly definable and measurable goals. And then in this process, we are also looking at personal objectives, which involves setting out uh, some of the very, very specific uh, objectives in terms of what you intend to uh, attain or what you would want to be uh, as a leader. So uh, the development cycle, so practically, practically when you are working on a personal growth uh, plan, uh, we look. We start from establishing aims and objectives, what you want to achieve. Uh, you, and then we categorize this in terms of short, medium, or long term. Okay. Then we assess current realities. Uh, current realities, uh, we can use what we normally call as is analysis. Uh, and then you also have to be analysis. So what are the current realities and what are to be uh, realities? What do you want to see? This is what we have now. Uh, who, this is who I am now. And uh, this is who I will want to be maybe in the next few years. Or so this is how my leadership style is currently. Then how do I want to, how, how do I want to see it in the next uh, two, three or five years? So assessing the current realities. That will help us to identify the gaps, uh, either based on skills, knowledge, competence, and then we'll be able to select appropriate development activities to meet those uh, perceived needs. Then strategies or plans for reaching the goals, and then how do we measure and assess progress? And then finally, a feedback system to provide information. So these are very important uh, cycle, uh, not just for personal development, uh, even in the project, this can inform our project in a way. So as we look at this, we can be able to apply it in various uh, areas. So this is a pictorial, uh, just a pictorial of what we have talked about. Establish the aim, establish the purpose, establish direction, identify the gaps or the needs, uh, look at development opportunities, uh, formulate action plan, take development, record outcomes, then you review and evaluate, okay? So this is a very simplified picture of what we have discussed. Uh, again, at a bigger, high level, uh, high level uh, presentation of what we have talked about, you can look at it from maybe planning, doing, checking, and acting. So as I do my personal growth and plan, uh, one, I do the plan, uh, and this is what we said, being proactive, plan ahead for change, plan ahead for growth, and then do execute the plan. Uh, taking small steps in control, circumstances, then check, study the results, evaluate the results, and then act, take action to standardize or improve the process, and then move on uh, with the cycle. So basically, as I'll conclude this by just highlighting some of the attributes, personal development attributes, very, very important. So one of the attributes, which is a success uh, attribute actually, it's focus. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, he talks about focus in terms of follow one course until successful. So identify your areas of interest, passion, potential or strength, and then focus. It's not how much, but it's how impactful we, we, we are able to be as leaders that really makes the distinction. If you look at uh, any successful leaders uh, and even as where we've been successful as leaders, I think focus has been very key. We've been able to identify an area and really focus. Uh, even in the academic world, uh, in the academic world, the higher you go, uh, that you're expected to really focus. You're expected to be maybe narrow, but, be, but very, very impactful or very transformational. You are able to bring out something that trans, transforms the whole world. 
but that can only come from a point of focus. So narrow down uh, probably to one course or few courses, uh, center of interest, have a focal point, clear visual reference point, and uh, we try as much as possible to avoid uh, becoming jack of all trade, and uh, we focus on being a specialist. So focus, uh, so focus. We are talking in terms of an area, and also focus in terms of the journey, the process. Then positivity. So this will keep us on track, uh, and it also establishes an environment of soberness and open, uh, open mindedness. The other attribute is consistency. Uh, success is the sum total of small efforts that we repeat day in and day out. So consistency, this is the key success factor. Uh, it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently, what we do every, every day. So I think for personal growth, consistency is the most important uh, attribute when it comes to success. Uh, then self-discipline, uh, we need to be very purposeful, we need to be persistent, uh, determined, and also uh, maintain tenacity. Patience, critical. Patience is about constantly doing everything you can but be impatient about results. And then finally, persistence, the ability to maintain a will as constant as time in pursuit of that which captures your eyes. So this, these are very important attributes uh, that we, we can embrace. Uh, so you, we can start seeing the plan coming out and uh, the plan also needs to take care of these attributes. So we are able to look at some of the attributes that I really need to focus on. And uh, they, they help us they, to keep, uh, they, they, they'll help to keep ourselves in check. Uh, so if I realize consistency, I'm having a challenge on consistency, then I may need to uh, flag it out uh, so that I give it more attention and then I build myself around that area. Uh, there is a story and uh, this will help us just to build on what we have discussed about. A story is told about a Chinese bamboo tree. I don't know if anybody has heard about this uh, Chinese bamboo tree. Uh, anybody who has come across this story? Chinese yes. Tree? Ah, yes, Chairman. Yes, we are. Uh, we are social media, and I think somebody has also used it in uh, as an illustration uh, to show the. Uh, yeah, I think it was more of. Uh, how you, the foundation that the deeper you go in the foundation uh the higher the building goes mm. so, uh, yeah and a lot of that foundation or uh work to is unseen yeah true mm. true chairman so basically uh it said that a chinese bamboo tree or bamboo seed is so hard that uh when it's planted uh, it's planted it takes five years to germinate. So for five years, uh, the seed is in the soil and the farmer has to keep on watering that seed for five good years without seeing any evidence of uh, uh, the bamboo tree growing. There's no germination. So these five years are just for watering uh, and consistently doing that with a positive mind, uh, persistence, with consistency, with focus on where that uh, uh, seed was planted, and also with faith that something is happening. But after five years, uh, it's said that the Chinese bamboo tree grows 80 feet in six weeks. So in six weeks after germination, it grows Eight feet. That's quite, quite rapid. Uh, actually, the 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 the, the write-up says, or the research says, it's all, almost possible to literally see the uh, the Chinese bamboo tree growing. But the question is, did, did it really grow in those six weeks 
for eta feet. Uh, it's those five, uh, six, uh, five years under the soil that really makes all the difference. And uh, this is a very good example when it comes to issues of personal growth and development. Sometimes we are doing things behind the scenes and uh, we even feel like ourselves, nothing is really coming out. But at the right time with that consistency, uh, when the shoot comes, uh, when the change or when the, the fruit is manifested, again, we start realizing, wow, uh, people have started noticing something that we didn't notice. Uh, there's a colleague of mine, uh, she was working on a weight management uh, a plan. And uh, one day I, I, I saw her after some years and I was like, I asked her, what happened? Uh, you have changed, you have lost a lot of weight. And she was telling me, uh, I went to gym for three years, I didn't see anything. I was just the same and I was wondering, all this time that I'm investing in the gym, three years, nothing is, is seen. But after three years, she started seeing a rapid change. But it is from the investment that she had done for three years that really made the difference. So the growth, this is a very good example when it comes to personal growth. We consistently doing it. Uh, nothing might, no, nobody might notice. Even ourselves, we might have doubt. Is really something happening? Uh, I have experienced it in this program. We invested a lot of time uh, growing you as a person, but all of a sudden you realize you get a forum to just share something and People appreciate what you are saying. Uh, people appreciate the little knowledge you're able to share with them. And that is when I'm always able to reflect back those days that uh, I was just alone in my room uh, out there, uh, just setting the mood, listening and listening again, reading and reading again. Nothing seemed to happen, but now you can notice something uh, is happening. So uh, uh, Chinese bamboo tree, is a good example to remember in terms of the success attributes that I've been able to mention. So finally, there are traps that we need to watch out uh, in terms of uh, personal growth and development. These traps can hinder our growth, and one of them is the environment. Uh, the positioning is very important. So uh, there are times we are so comfortable. So there are times that uh, we we, are in, we feel we are so secure in where we are. Uh, this can trap our growth and development uh, because the comfort zone is good in a way, but the comfort zone uh, might also trap us from listening more into ourselves or listening more into the environment. So I think we need to be careful and to be watchful on this uh, so that we also always ensuring that uh, we, we are able to, because any growth, will always push us outside the comfort zone. Uh, it will always push us out of, outside the most routine habit that we have developed. And also the environment you're talking about, even the people uh, where we have positioned ourselves. Uh, there, there, there are times you position yourselves in, a, in an environment of people who are also proactive in growth and we realize, wow, uh, I, I'm in the right company, I'm being challenged, I'm growing, uh, someone said, if you're in, an, in a, a forum where everybody asks you questions, uh, then you need, to, you need to plan your way forward. Uh, it means you might not be able to grow more. Uh, you need to be in an environment where you also be able to be challenged. You're able to listen and also ask other people, uh, other people questions. And then mindset, the difference between successful and successful people is how they think about who they are uh and what they have so our mindset can be another trap and our mindset is another resource that we have so we look at i i mentioned this about the elements skill enhancement i also talked about uh, uh the issues of the mindset uh the issue of the mind uh, so this is this can be a resource and also it can be a trap because this is uh, the uh, one of the most uh, key driver when it comes to issues of personal growth and development. Uh, Albert Einstein said we cannot 
solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. So our thinking has to be elevated. Sometimes we have to walk out of the environment to be able to offer a challenge to that particular environment. It means we have to elevate ourselves in a way uh, for us to be able to uh, get back and help the people uh, from the environment that we, we, we probably we were in at some particular uh, moment also. And then self-defeating habits, every new level in life demands new habits. So upward plus demands upward habits. Uh, we are what we repeatedly think and do. So defeat uh, habits, we can build growth habits and also we need to watch out for a self defeating habits. So these are some of the three uh, traps. I know there are many others that we can be able to highlight, but I just felt I just need to highlight these three so that we are able to watch out. Finally, as this quote, we started from here, uh, Robert Anthony, and he said, you can only have two things in life, reasons and results, but reasons may not count. So uh, there may always one more reason not to do something. There is always one more reason probably not to embark on a particular journey. But again, now what makes the difference is that when people will be giving results, uh, then it's not appropriate for me to be giving results. It's better to give uh, results than to give reasons. So in personal growth and development, I think what really counts is embarking on the journey is those progressive uh, efforts, is that difference that we experience in each and every day that will count at the end of the day. So thank you so much. Uh, this just the highlight of this uh, lesson 15 on personal growth and development. And I think uh, I, I just challenge all of us that uh, we, we just need to probably listen to this more as we make our own personal notes and uh, probably just build your own. We haven't helped you to come up with a, a structured personal growth and development plan, but I think the elements that we have been able to discuss here, you can be able to flush out and be able to uh, probably develop your own and see how do you move on in terms of building or maintaining the momentum that we have built during this period and also those new habits that we have been able to build, how do we enhance them as a way forward? Again, take the time to look at page 118 uh, from our manual. There is a leadership challenge there. It will guide you. Uh, again, we'll be required to undertake our own SWOT analysis here. And uh, there's a table there that will help us to be able to undertake that. There's also another table on goal settings and uh, there's a matrix. So that matrix will guide you in terms of goal settings. And then on page 120, there is a personal objectives uh, table. So you'll be able to identify short-term goals, maybe for the next 12 months, uh, medium-term goals, next two to three years, and then long-term goals beyond three years. So if you look at this exercise, it will also help us, it will also help us to be able to develop uh, a personal growth and development a plan uh, to maintain the momentum and to be able to move on. So thank you so much. Uh, I wish to pause there uh, for today and just take uh, probably a few comments from you uh, on this subject as we spend another few minutes just to discuss about our project. So let me open the uh, the platform just to be able to get your points or be able to get your comments. It can be your takeaway, it can be an additional comment. Uh, feel free to take uh, any, uh, any route in terms of sharing your comments. And I think anybody, just feel free to unmute and share. Or maybe we can go in order for the purposes of managing time. And I'll start with Nelson. Okay, for me, uh, what has come out for me is uh, 
we might make all these plans, uh, we might do the actions and everything, but consistency is key to everything. We might start, but there are challenges that always come up with as, as every project, you will always face challenges. How to open the challenges and reinvent yourself so that you can apply yourself better will always be key. So consistency is really key. And also uh, this quote by Robert Anthony, mm -hmm. we can only have life, reasons and results. Reasons don't. So you'll find everyone always has a reason to do something or not to do something. So now that uh, our minds have been enlightened, if we are expected to do something, if we don't do it, or if we do it poorly or anything, the reasons we give won't really count. It's the results that are expected from us that will count. Yeah, that's my take home. Thank you, Nelson. <laughs> uh, Maurice, your comments? Thank you. Um, very simple statement that personal development is a lifelong uh, process that we need to embrace. Mm -hmm. I think that one puts everything together because all the persistence, all the plans, and all the self-development skills that you have, they all make you understand that for you to be personally developed, it doesn't matter the age. It's a long, a lifelong thing, and every stage of life uh, presents its own challenge. So you need to be prepared to be uh, prepared to be able to, to face the challenges that are be before you much ahead of time. Otherwise, it will come and really you and we'll find us where we are now in the in the world. Everybody else is chasing material wealth, yet they don't, your wealth must be generated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Maurice. Uh, chairman? Thank you, Banakiari. Uh, there, there is some, some, some uh, uh, quotes I, I put here. Yeah, Kando Kando, I think they were in your, in your slides. Uh, one of them, I don't know whether I got it correct, but certain to me. To so never love a company uh, until the workers love it. Or they will never love me. What came to me is they will never love that company or the product that that company is selling until the workers love it. I don't know if it came up something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then another one is people are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to, Im to improve, you know, to improve themselves, mm -hmm. then they remain unbo unbound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yes, so uh, how I connected with this is that any time uh, I would want to uh, I should not look for circumstances external. Uh, the person who needs to bring the change is myself. Mm -hmm. Just like we have seen, uh, even if it is in the church circles, in the spiritual, if you want to improve lives of people or to, 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 to change a certain place, let's say Kulikuana, in a certain place there was witchcraft, you you go speaking to them, uh, they change their lives. That's how they change their area. The people have people are the, the agents themselves. So the people change first, and then they change their area or circumstances. So it is not you change the circumstances. When you change the people themselves, they will they, they actually now change their area where they are working. They will not allow some of those now. So is that um. Uh, like a leader today, speaking about integrity. If my, I know, I know, uh, practice, you know, doing ethical things is bad. Or we all know it, including the people who are doing it. Mm -hmm. The person who can really speak it, like a salmon, is the person who is living it. 
is you are speaking it. So you, you have bought into it. So the best way you be sold the message that comes out of your mess uh, comes out comes out of your thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. And that reminds thank you. me that reminds me of Nelson Mandela quote. Until I changed myself, I could not change others. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, until I changed uh. myself, I could not change others. Yes, and I think oh, that's so. that, that's like a, a, a summary of what you have uh, you, you've shared. Okay, so let me move on to Robert Wamalwa. Mm, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, and uh, uh, from that self awareness, getting to know who you are and uh, you yourself. And uh, with that uh, story of the Chinese bamboo, that one is the most important thing in ever. Brand us seat that will take five years, which I mean, a lot of persistence, consistency, and all. All those uh, attributes that been mentioned there, and uh, a city or say resistance, where is the resistance? Actually, that is what you need to be doing. People may as if you, maybe you are asking because what the world believe it's only the, the mighty person who will keep on doing one thing or through. But actually, that is what, what uh, actually makes the one to become who he is. And from there, others will learn from, them, from him because of what one has, where one has come from. So once you know who you are, you will not just go and fall for anything that you come across or you see around. And you know where you are going. And because you, you know where your eyes are set on the call, so you keep focusing on that call and you work until you attain that call. As you, once you achieve, then the rest will have to follow and get to know. Actually, this man, or this is the preparation that you have brought about. Thank you and God bless. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Robert. Uh, let me move to Job. Uh, Job, you can unmute and share your comments. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Job. Yeah, um, my take home today is about growth. I personally, I can say, I've been really struggling with uh, some kind of things eh, in life. But now through this program, to this section whereby I now, whereby I have to believe in myself, how to plan things, how to take action, and how to sample out the results that are coming on my way. Because there are several things I've found. In some points, I'm stuck, some do the um, um, lack of finances, um, sort of challenges coming on my way. I found. Now I'm like giving up, but now because of this program, 
not to believe in myself, to plan and act, purpose to do, to do, and the dream I have. As a leader also, as a young, a young man of a family, you find sometimes things coming my way and then you are like, let me just carry myself and stop doing this. But now, through this program, I found myself now getting to some situation in life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Job. Uh, I'm sure this is uh, a platform, not just for learning, but also in terms of networking, in terms of uh, encouraging each other, and uh, more so just to be able to open up and more so even as men, because here we are men, and just to be able to sh share our own experiences, see how to help improve each other. So uh, I'm thinking we just need to move on and share, because since we are just two groups, we may not take long. If each group can take about three minutes, just to be able to share where you are. Uh, I don't know if there is any group that has something to present on the screen. I can allow you to share your screen if you need to take that uh, approach. But uh, if you just have a write-up that you need to read through, uh, we can still do that. Uh, because now next week we'll have our final session, lesson 16, and then we'll also uh, again listen to your uh, presentations. And the other week we'll just have presentations only. We'll also be inviting cohort 10 to join us. Uh, that is the Sunday school teachers. Uh, they will join us uh, the other Saturday to listen to your presentations. So let me uh, just uh, allow you to share briefly. Uh, probably you can start with uh, Gideomi and Robert. You can share your updates. I've seen through what you shared, but you can just share with the team so that we are all at par on what is uh, uh, in terms of the project proposals. So let's proceed, Mr. Gideomi or Robert. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, we have, have uh, come up with something still in the, you know, in the room. Uh, a colleague, Robert Juma, to take it up from there and uh, give more information. So that's what we are working on, the project, as we shared. Uh, uh, research teaching and gathering a lot of information thank you brother Kidiomi, uh, for the opportunity you have given me uh, may I uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can, I think, I think you have the document. If you can share, then I will go through it very fast. Okay, there it is. Yes, thank you. Uh, now, looking at this, uh, this is a project proposal for our group, and it was of. Uh, Five brothers, uh, Brother Peter, Peter Gidiomi, uh, myself, with us. But we say that that one cannot uh, it us from going on. And then, um, what our proposal is about the regeneration of used motor oil. It simply is just recycling of uh, used motor oil. And the, uh, the background, as you can all see, is that, you know, the engine lubricating oils, uh, there are fissure, viscous liquids that are used for lubricating um, moving parts of an engine and machines. Most of us, we are aware 
that every moving part or every, every machine uses oil. The reason why it uses reduce friction and the bring uh, reduces the temperature for the moving parts so that that one also reduces the wear and tear of those parts. And you find that there are so many uh, moving machines, automobiles, vehicles, you look around, there are so many cars and every engine uses oil. Every machine uses oil. And now after this oil has been used, where does it go? You find that uh, this oil, it has to be disposed, but you cannot just dispose it anyhow. Why? Because it has got uh, an adverse effect to the environment and even to the aquatic life because you cannot just pour it into the sea or wherever. And we have the standards because of the uh, National Environmental Management Authority and even the world, the standards are... <sighs> Sorry, Robert. Hello, Robert. Seem to have lost, uh, lost uh, connectivity or something. Yeah, it looks like. So maybe you can uh, carry on as we try to check on him. Uh, the, I yeah. can, the numbers are so small. Okay, let me try to zoom it uh, again. I, Uh, how is that? That's okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to use another guy. Okay, okay. Yet here. Yeah, and anyway, I think as uh, Robert has brought it out, uh, we 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 know about the fabricating oil, the way we have seen it even used in our garages. Uh, they don't handle this product properly. Uh, it's wasted, it goes to the ground and becomes uh, dangerous to the environment and also to the so hello hello yes sir, Mr. Gidiomi hello Yes, we can hear you, uh, Chairman. The document has disappeared. Oh. Let me see, let me... I'm saying... Okay. I, I cannot see our document. Okay. It's a disadvantage. Uh, how about now? Are you able to see the document now? No, now it is coming. Okay. So you can tell me when to scroll. No, it is still uh, what you call buffering, going round round, so that it open. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. You, you are able to see. Uh, it's still going around. 
how about the others? Anybody, how, how is it on, the, on your side for the others? And see, yes, even me, I can. Okay, so, so Mr. Gideon, I think uh, maybe. It, it ah, might... now I can see. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now I can see. Okay. Okay. Uh, think uh, okay we seem to also mm -hmm. lose you we yeah. want to yeah. have yeah. into this issue that i think i'm back eh? that has not yes yes you are back i can see uh about the yes, myself so yes, uh, Mr. yes Kerry. uh we seem Mr. to Kerry, lose you. you are saying you are also losing uh, me yeah chairman we, we seem to be losing a lot of uh the part of your Hello? communication we seem to be losing part of your communication uh chairman but i think also robert is back Yeah, so probably, uh, Robert, you can continue. Uh, thank you. Uh, brother, give me a second. Hello, Robert. I'm still on the the background or if moved it, uh, you are still on the background. I think you can move. Okay. Yeah. Now I was giving a synopsis eh, of uh, this uh, used of oil. Now you find that this oil we have every machine using oil. And now the problem we are having not only can but one one. Okay? Only problem we are having is, is or how this calls you for because it has got it hits a problem. Okay. Uh, Robert, please unmute. Disposing of this used oil is a problem, uh, and it ha it's causing a lot of uh, to the authorities that are there. Looking at the content of it and what have you, because I just wanted to give a synopsis of this instead of reading everything, and uh, you we get to understand where we are coming from and how to solve our pro this problem. Now, because of that, you find that from the institute, from the American Petroleum Institute, it shows that most of the aromatic present in the loop base, uh, in the loop base, all is uh, was done by a guy called Raider in 2011. Uh, so they used the lubricating oils like the automobile lubricating oils are petroleum derived and original because all these products let's move let's move down uh, they this used uh, lubricating oils like the automobile lubricating oils are petroleum originally produced through acid and bleaching um uh, the bleaching process so the simple thing the simplest way of making sure that this oil 
is not, uh, we reduce the environmental pollution. Ours is just to, re to reduce the environmental pollution uh, so that, and also to create employment and uh, uh, bring other benefits to the society. You find that there's a very simple process of which, and it is just an innovation, whereby you use the, the carbon, we call it carbon, Mostly we know we know it as charcoal. It's composed of carbon. Through carbon, we use the carbon to make sure that we recycle this oil. And the clean oil, it has got uh, it's a brownish in color. And for you to make it come back to life again, and can it be used again? You take it through that process, bleaching process, by using the charcoal, and then you take oil, and uh, I've, I've come from my research, I find that if you do it like that, it can, used, it can be used five times uh, before it gets out of use. And how to dispose it when you, after the fifth time, it will not have any detriment to the environment, to the aquatic life, and water. So that is the reason why we thought of coming up with this innovation. Number one, it will help to reduce environmental pollution and it will employment to the youth who are damaging who don't have jobs by just coming up with uh, a recycling, a used oil recycling plant. So once it is there, you will find that many youths will find employment because this one is a very big project that actually it will have to help many that who are jobless to get a job. And also the other people, because now once you do this, even the price of that used oil after has, having been recycled, it will be easier for, it will be cheaper, not easier, it will be cheaper because the price will not be high as the one that you are going to buy from uh, the, the new one that you buy. So because of that, we decided to come up with this so that it can, this one is a, an elephant in the room that we have to solve a lot of uh, challenges for the countries, for the third world countries especially, because that world countries are the ones which are facing this problem. So I think as brief as that, that is all about our project. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Morris and uh, your team. So I think your background is quite comprehensive. Uh, so we probably we can uh, now be able to bring out the other part of the presentation, especially on the objectives. I know you have mentioned them uh, within the background, but uh, maybe you can now flash them out. So just have a background uh, separate and then move on to uh, the objectives. And more specifically also the issue of the problem statement. Uh, so all these, uh, somehow captured uh, within your background. So now we can uh, flash out uh, those areas. So have the background, have the objectives, and then have the problem statement uh, now separate from, from the background. Uh, then we'll move on to the, 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 the other issues. Some of the issues I've been able to pick uh, especially on the objectives, is to reduce environmental pollution. Uh, you have mentioned issues of job creation and, uh, and also maybe uh, recycling the oil. Uh, there, is, there is some element on the green, is it the green oil or something to do with, you mentioned something on the either green oil or something. Or environment. Green I mean, environment. Green environment. Yeah. So I think we just yes. need now to fine tune the objectives. Fine tune the objectives. Yes. From the background. You have captured them. 
So we just need to flush them out and now bring them clearly. And uh, also in terms of, uh, you know, in research uh, or even in project proposal, we try to also confirm, okay, we can uh, presume there is a problem, but uh, either from the mm. write-ups, like the way you have cited some of the write-ups, uh, we are able now to confirm the reality of that problem uh, from the literature. Or second, yes. we can also confirm yes. from other methods like uh, maybe primary data. And primary data here, we're talking mm -hmm. about maybe undertaking a survey just to really confirm. Are these the real challenges that are out there? Uh, and uh, probably what are some of the uh, solutions that we can be able to pick from the primary data or from the survey? So one way we can look at it from either focus on, pre on uh, secondary data, that is the literature that is already available out there. Uh, if need be, then you can adopt part of the primary data, but that also depends with how much, uh, how much data is available on uh, literatures. If there is a lot of documented data, uh, then we may not need to undertake a, a survey. But uh, with your team, you can engage and see the best approach to be able to undertake this. But I think so far, from your background, it's a bit clear. It's clear there is a clarity in terms of what you're addressing. And also, you've been able to bring out the background. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so I, I hope I've been able to capture those few issues that I've mentioned, but I'll also uh, put some comments on the document. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, because for the interest of time, we may not uh, discuss so much on this, uh, but uh, I see we have uh, Nelson. I think uh, we have lost... Uh, Morris. So maybe Nelson, you can share your progress. Yes, uh, I can share my screen. Yeah, let me allow you to share your screen. Okay, you can share your screen now. Okay. You're able to see it? Yeah, yeah, we can see your screen. The, the, the title is Creating Awareness for Locally Manufactured Products. And uh, the problem statement is, is uh, people have a higher affinity for imported goods than for locally manufactured or assembled goods. This creates an imbalance in the value chain, weaker currency and lack of development and innovativeness in the economy. We need to change this mindset through educating, creating awareness and equipping the local populace to embrace locally manufactured products. And then uh, we have our objective here. So our objectives is one is to create awareness and availability of all or most of the locally manufactured goods. And then two, we have integrating knowledge and skills through trainings, equipping locals to manufacture them and invest locally. And he is build a robust value chain and grow the economy from manufacturing, production, and market more employment opportunities, self-employment, and more exports than uh, imports. Then we also did uh, 
active advertisements, social media presence, branding and ambassadors, have creating forums and trainings on manufacturing people about the importance of consuming locally manufactured goods and the value it creates. And then three, we have engaging with the local leaders, government, and other like-minded stakeholders sharing consumption and exporting of local products, enabling people to access funds easily and limiting the volumes of imports for products. And then we can now try and uh, discuss it further, make background and proceed with the other parts that are required. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Nelson, for the presentation. So I'm thinking uh, people have a high affinity for imported goods than for locally manufactured or assembled goods. This creates an imbalance in the value chain, weaker currency and lack of development and innovativeness in the economy. We need to change this mindset through educating, creating awareness and equipping the local uh, populace to embrace locally manufactured products. So from this, I can see the focus is more on the uh, awareness, creating awareness. That's like the core of uh, your research or your proposal. Yes. Okay, Let, let's move to the objectives. Uh, you can scroll down a, a bit. So the first objective to create awareness, create awareness and availability of all or most of the locally manufactured goods. So that, that aligns to your topic, yeah, creating uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. And then to integrating knowledge and skills through trainings, equipping and empowering the locals to manufacture their own uh, and invest locally. So that objective two seems to have an element of uh, awareness, but it also brings another aspect uh, on board uh, on issues of empowerment, empowering the locals to manufacture their own and invest locally. So there is a new aspect that comes on board uh, in that objective two. And then three, to build a robust value chain and grow the economy from manufacturing, production, and marketing to ensure more employment opportunities, self-development, and more exports than imports. Now, the objective three also seems to uh, take us to another direction. Uh, so I'm trying to look from the, from the topic and from the problem statement, uh, because uh, each of these objectives will need to be addressed to the very end of the project or to the very end of the proposals. And we don't want to move probably out, out of the scope of the one problem statement and also the, the particular topic that, that, that uh, you're pursuing. So normally we, we normally advise that uh, be very narrow uh, in terms of either your scope or even in terms of the objectives, but be very focused. And also look at uh, maybe when you're looking at, talking about awareness, uh, how do we practically undertake that? Uh, are we going to use, because for now, we, we're really advocating for uh, tapping more into the digital platforms. So you might need to come out clear, like I, I, I know we have mentioned something on the, some, something to do with uh, social media, uh, through social media, but 
is it possible to create a platform? Maybe those are some of the thinking that you can have around this, something that will have more, uh, maybe uh, more impact and also be more user-friendly, more uh, specific, more, pla more uh, space to grow. And probably when some of them end up becoming business ventures or, uh, or, or they take any other direction. So I think you may need to relook at, you may need to relook at objectives, objective two and objective three uh, to make sure that they align with the problem statement and you, the, core, uh, the core of your, of your project proposal because I'm, I'm finding those two might be heavy uh, to undertake uh, within the same, within the same uh, project proposal. Because sometimes you might have a, uh, an objective that actually can stand on its own. It's another project on uh, all together. So, uh, and then uh, for the methodology, uh, your methodology, uh, I think here we are talking about uh, strategies. So for the methodology, what, what you have captured as methodology, those will be captured as, as strategies, some of the strategies that you will employ, uh, creating awareness, creating forums, uh, engaging with the local dealers, those will be your strategies. So methodology, you look at either, uh, one of them is literature review, and I mentioned that can be from primary data, uh, or secondary data. Uh, two, we talk about uh, benchmarking. You can also undertake benchmarking. Uh, you can undertake surveys. Uh, you can undertake experiments, but here we may not undertake experiments. So those are the, that, that is what fits within uh, the methodology. But within them, what you have within the methodology, we'll move that one and capture it, capture it as uh, under the strategies, okay? So I think uh, just look at, with the, as a team, look at your objectives again. Uh, see if you can still address two and three, but if you feel they are a bit out of the scope, then there's no harm of dropping them or refining them to fit within. The key message here is awareness uh, creation. Uh, uh, is it clear, uh, Nelson? Yes, yes, uh, Kiari, it's uh, very clear. I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, we need to stick more to the to the title and problem statement, which is uh, awareness. That's what's coming out very clearly. Yeah. So these other two, uh, they are deviating from that awareness and addressing uh, almost similar ideas, but not the the the, the key problem statement. Very true, very true. Good, I think that is good progress for today. Um, I, I, I think by next Saturday will be, will, will be very, will be quite advanced on our project. So please Nelson, share this, share with me this I'll, uh, write up. Uh, I'll share my comments also on this, uh, on the write up. Okay. 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 Okay, straight, straight away. Uh, Sante Sana. So uh, leaders, I think uh, I'm thinking we can pause there for today. Uh, unless there is any comment, uh, there is any question, then we can address a question or comment as we close. Uh, next week- uh, Just we... a question, Kiari. Okay, Nelson. Yeah, we. I'm seeing the government has uh, restrictions and guidelines. Are women physically or? Uh, Nelson, I lost. Uh, I didn't get the whole question. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, I was just inquiring, seeing that the government has eased up on the COVID restrictions and gatherings. 
Mm. Uh, will we be meeting physically on the next meeting or will it still be on? Yeah, I think what we'll do uh, in the course of the week, we'll uh, do some consultations uh, because if prayers, if morning prayers will resume, then uh, the classes also might resume physically, but we'll advise on that uh, in the course of the week. Okay, noted. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, is there any other comment or question or observation? Um, actually, uh, so far, I would say so far so good. Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Kiarie, and uh, thank you for that constructive criticism. And I know uh, we are going to fine tune it because sometimes these things we have been doing in, in a hurry. And as you may understand, you know, time is everything. Time is of essence that we do not have to procrastinate on these things. Uh, so it is good that we can call it a good start. And I'm sure by come next Saturday, we shall have fine tuned everything and we shall have the proper slides and uh, a summer of the same and all will be well. Thank you very much. Um, sometimes they say that um, you may look at, uh, you may look, you may see something in someone in, in a friend's eye and you forget in your eye. Mm -hmm. I've seen the, the, the project for the second group, for, for Nelson's group is very good. And those are objectives just as you have commended Mm. Uh, like uh, objective number three is too heavy. And now that one looks like it is a, it's a general objective. Now from that general objective, they can come up with a specific objective out of that and then they can tailor that and they can fine tune it and it becomes well. Otherwise, all is good. And uh, we really thank God for everything. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, God bless you too. I know one thing we'll have to do, it's, uh, we'll have to read a lot, uh, especially on our areas. Uh, and that is the beauty of any research or any proposal. It takes you to the depth of the subject. So the more we dig deeper and read through, we are able to get more knowledge and also be able to uh, fine tune our project uh, proposals. Uh, Chairman, uh, is there any comment from your end? Okay, okay. I think uh, I've seen he has unmuted, but uh, we can't hear him. Good. So I think we can unmute and share the word of grace together. And may and the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of, the love the love of God, God, the fellowship of the Holy the Spirit, Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit be, with us now, be with us now, forever, forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much and uh, have a blessed night. It was a pleasure. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless Welcome. you.